What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner, and today we're going to be talking about the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon VND Mist Edition 2. God, that was a long name. Let's get right into it. This is the second generation variable ND coming from the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon collaboration. Now, although not a lot has changed between the first and second generation products, there are some differences. The first one you'll notice is the packaging and unboxing experience. The old filter came in a very nice box with a lot of extras in it and a lot of stuff for Peter McKinnon. And I really liked that box. It was a great unboxing experience. However, even though it was a great unboxing experience, I don't actually use the box in real life. So for me, this wasn't really a huge thing because the thing I really cared about was the filter. And the filter was pretty great, but I don't need the box. This one is a lot more simple. It comes in eco-friendly packaging. It's very simplistic. You take it out and the filter is there. It's as simple as that. It comes with a nice little cleaning cloth and that's about it. Speaking of what the filter comes with, we get the brand new protective case slash lens cover, which I actually really, really like. On the previous generation, it came with a separate case and then a cover, so you'd always have to bring the case with you. But this cover slash protective case is all encapsulated in one thing, so you don't need a separate cover to actually bring this along with you. It's either attached to your camera or not, and I really like that. This new filter case slash lens cover is actually completely self-contained, which is really nice. You no longer need the filter with its protective hood and then a separate case when you're storing it in your bag. You can just take the filter off and replace the back. They also have this very ingenious thing where if you take off the back of the protective cover, it slides on to the front of the cover, so you're never going to lose it, which I greatly appreciate. The filter also comes with a brand new color. It's no longer a matte gold. It is more of a glossy gold. I kind of prefer the previous matte gold. It was subtle but classy. This one is a little bit in your face, so if you're out and about, I guess that's one way to discern the old one to the new one. So if you want to show off, I guess you can with that. But uh, for me, I feel like most people aren't going to really notice and I kind of prefer the previous matte gold look, but this, this shiny gold, not a huge difference. Most people aren't going to notice. But enough talk about this filter and its physical changes and the packaging and all that nonsense. Let's take it out into the real world and see how it performs. So this is the first time using the brand new Peter McKinnon ND filter from Polar Pro. This is the mist version. So I'm very excited to see how this diffusion is going to affect the image and if it's worth it. So I wanted to talk a bit about why I chose to buy this filter. I bought the six to nine stop previous generation filter. And the reason why I bought that filter was pretty much only because I bought the a7S III. I needed an ND filter that could shoot in broad daylight at ISO 640 and S-Log3. And so I started using the six to nine filter and it 100% works. But I found that when I was in shadows, it was just so strong I didn't like it. And on slightly overcast days, anything shy of a super bright day, the six to nine stop was too powerful. So that's when I decided I needed, woohoo. Hello, buddy. Hello. Buddy. Hello. <laughs> that's when I decided I needed the two to five stop. So when I saw that Polar Pro was coming out with brand new ND filters and one that had diffusion in it, I was very intrigued. So with the two to five stop, right now we're at five stops, we're at full strength. We're at F4 on the 20 mil 1.8G on the Sony a7S III at ISO 640, the base ISO of S-Log3. And the reason why I'm stopped down to F4 is because clearly five stops isn't enough to expose correctly in broad daylight. But as we get into the shadows, that changes. So here you can see we're at F4 and now at 1.8, ah, we're gonna go to 2.2. That looks about right. So now we're at 2.2, the shadows look about right. And then when I come out of the shadows, we look pretty much properly exposed once again. So now we're back to shooting at F4 because again, we're in broad light, we're not in shadow anymore. So as I walk around and the sun starts hitting my face, how do we look? Do we look good? Can you see any vignetting on the corners? That's something I noticed, especially on the six to nine stop when I was using the a7S III in active mode. And a lot of you guys noticed as well. And I was kind of bummed that I paid that much for a filter and there was that much vignetting. I wasn't expecting that. So now we're in a secluded area and the mask is off. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that, aside from the eye tracking that the camera can now pick up my eye that I don't have the mask on, is 
to see the effect the diffusion has on my skin because I'm very curious about this effect on skin because this is the thing that I would most likely be using it for. Yes, other people are saying it's cinematic, but you know, I just want softer skin on me and sure, if that's a side effect from making it look more cinematic, then yeah, I'll take that. That's one of the reasons why, because I'm, I've been looking into diffusion filters and I've recently purchased the Hollywood Blackmagic filter and I'm very excited about that. It was actually supposed to arrive today, but this came first and I wanted to talk about diffusion filters alongside that, but now that it hasn't arrived yet, I don't have that to compare it to. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a diffusion filter is one, flattering on the skin, looks good for clients, and it has a really nice halation to the highlights, which means the highlight roll off is just a little bit nicer. It means that lights are gonna bloom some more and it just looks more cinematic. And as much as that word is overused, there's a reason why that look is associated with that word because that's what we're accustomed to seeing in big budget Hollywood movies. And since I'm going to be using this a lot handheld or on a gimbal, I don't want a super front heavy gimbal with multiple filters stacked in one another, especially when a lot of these filters don't have front filter threads to actually filter stack. So that's a bit of an issue. If I want diffusion, I have to decide whether or not I want an ND filter or diffusion. And if I'm shooting outside during the day before night, the answer is going to be ND filter. And then I'm like, that's a bummer. I want my client to look good, have that soft skin. And they're gonna be like, wow, I, I look really good. My, I'm having a good skin day. Like when a client looks at themselves and they're like, yeah, I look good. That's always a good feeling. Cause you know, you're bringing that to the table. So that's why I was very interested in the diffusion in this filter. So what I've done now is open up the lens all the way to 1.8 and dropped the ISO to 160. So we're no longer at that base ISO of 640 for S-Log3. We're at the extended range, lower 160. So we're probably losing some dynamic range, but that does allow us to shoot wide open on a five stop ND filter. So now you can see how this affects the background a little bit, which is kind of interesting. So one of the newest features on this ND filter, the biggest change, honestly, between the previous version and this version is the way that you go from stop to stop. Now that there are hard stops for each stop. Previously, there were hard stops at the beginning and at the end, so you would never really get that X pattern with the cross polarization. But now when you switch to the next, there's a definite click and you know when you're actually getting to that next stop. So for some people, I think that's really helpful, but for me, Using the previous six to nine, I really liked the smooth movement from stop to stop when I was shooting video because here you can kind of see it just like switch. It's not as easy to do. And because there's that definite click, it feels almost magnetic when you're twisting it. There's definitely that like little bit of vibration going on as you switch and it's not as smooth as just like gently turning the ND filter uh, which is a little bit more subtle, and it's something that I appreciated more on the previous generation when doing video. For photo, I think that this uh, hard stop click is actually much better because you want those hard stops for photo, you don't want those in between. But when I'm shooting video, I kinda, if I'm just overexposed or underexposed, I don't wanna be like really forcibly flipping the ND filter, and then you see that hard stop kinda happen. I want it to be a little bit more subtle, and I want that kinda in between because it doesn't really like yes you can do in between now but it's it's kind of highly discouraged whereas on the previous generation one you could get away with being in between stops and it didn't really matter so what i kind of want to liken this to is the internal nd filters on cinema cameras like on the canon c line you have hard stop filters and when you're shooting out in broad daylight and you want to just nd up you can see the physical filter being adjusted on the image versus the electronic ND filter of the FX9, which is a lot more subtle and you can just dial in the exact exposure, the exact amount of ND you want because it's just, it's variable. I don't know how to explain it for someone who doesn't know that, but it's, it's not like a hard 
thing that you're seeing is subtle and it's just like a very slight in the moment kind of exposure adjustment that it's like, ah, okay, so we're going from ISO 100 to 200 very gradually versus we're going from 800 to 200 instantly. And it just, that kind of jump kind of takes you out of it versus having that smoother experience is just kind of like gradual, your eyes kind of adjust and it's like, oh, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Now onto some more nerdy tests. This filter does take a bit of sharpness off your image. You could view this as a good thing as taking off that digital edge or you could view it as a bad thing since your image is no longer as sharp. That's up to you. I personally don't think anyone is going to notice while watching a video since it is so subtle and you'd have to be pixel peeping on a raw image to really notice. But for those of you who do want to pixel peep, I got you, link in description. However, there is a very noticeable green tint and a slightly warmer temperature shift. If you set your white balance after putting the filter on, you should have no issues. And worst comes to worst, you can fix it in post, but it is something to be aware of. Vignetting slash the start of cross polarization is only really noticeable to me at five stops. You can see it at the top left and bottom right corners in this shot right here. Again, not something that's awful, but something to be aware of. In my test with bokeh, there doesn't seem to be any real effect due to the diffusion. The balls still have the same shape. If you pixel people like crazy on a raw image, you might see a slight grain in the bokeh, but that could be set across the entire image due to the diffusion. On the topic of diffusion, it seems like this is a pretty mild diffusion, which I think is the way to go in this case. Anything higher than that would just start getting in the way of the image, and people would start to complain that it's too much of a creative look. It's just subtle enough to smooth out those highlights and skin imperfections without it screaming, I'm using a diffusion filter! If you didn't notice a difference in the skin comparison, don't worry. Here's how this filter is going to affect lights in your image, and this is more noticeable than the skin test, so if you were doubting that there was actually any diffusion going on, here you are. There is a nice bloom to this phone flashlight. It's softer and not as harsh. You don't really see all those star-shaped lines. It's more of a uniform soft bulb compared to when there is no diffusion. With all that said and done, this filter comes in at $250. And something I do appreciate compared to the previous generation is that there's no price increase when you go to the six to nine or larger filter sizes. They're 250 across the board, which I greatly appreciate. However, are they worth $250? Like the previous generation products, that's up to you to decide. If you are into that kind of highest level quality stuff, then yes, it's a great purchase. If you own the previous generation stuff, do you need to upgrade? No, I would highly discourage you from upgrading to this current generation because there is very little difference. Unless you feel like you absolutely need to have those hard stops on the stops or the missed additions, it's really hard to justify buying a whole new filter for that price if you have the previous generation. The reason why I have the previous generation 6 to 9 and the current generation 2 to 5 is because they're different strengths. If they were the same strengths, I would not be purchasing them. That's it for me, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you excited about these filters? Are you going to be picking one up for yourself? Or do you think they are the most outrageous, expensive thing that's so unnecessary? I'd love to know your thoughts. My name is Mark Steiner, and I'll see you next time.